Welcome to Dare to Dream and Debbie Dashinger. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. Find out more about the extraordinary work they do all over the world at drdanehere.com and accessconsciousness.com. The Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Dare to Dream is ranked in the top best podcast in USA in self-improvement on all of Apple Podcasts, as well as ranking this week in Sweden and Portugal. Debbie Dashinger is a certified coach whose expertise is visibility in media. She coaches people to write a page turner book, takes their book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and she runs the ultimate visibility formula. She teaches people how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get crazy big results. You can connect with Debbie and get her free gifts, message template, and videos on how to be interviewed yourself at debbie-inger.com slash message. Get your free tools and templates at D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash message. Astrology your year ahead? Which day should you choose to pitch a new client? Have a job interview, first date, or buy a house? Well, my guest today covers all aspects, including new and full moons. Susan Miller is back. She's an internationally known author, columnist, entrepreneur, publisher, and pioneer of the internet. Susan is the respected founder of Astrology Zone, at astrologyzone.com. Her site is considered an authority in the field of Western astrology and is read avidly by 11 million unique readers a year. Susan's monthly forecasts, published on her website and on her app, Daily Horoscope, Astrology Zone, and more by Susan Miller, which you can get on the Apple App Store as well as Google Play, and it's celebrated worldwide. Susan is the author of 12 astrology books, the ever popular The Year Ahead Astrology Calendars, and she writes monthly columns for six international fashion magazines. You can follow and chat with Susan on Twitter at Astrology Zone and also order this year's astrology calendars by going to astrologyzone.com. Welcome, Susan Miller, back to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you here again. Thank you for inviting me. I was so happy when I heard your name that I would talk to you again. Yeah, we get to hang out again. You're in New York. I'm in Los Angeles, but (laughs) thank God for virtual technology. I love it. (laughs) It really is a great connector at a time like this. And I'm so excited to deep dive into astrology like it is so prevalent right now. I want to ask you just to get started about some differentiation, which is, is it easier for you to look at someone's entire birth chart to better understand them? Or is the sun sign actually enough? Oh, no, you really should look at the whole chart, especially if they have a question. Mm-hmm. You, The sun is very important because it's in the middle of the solar system so when i write astrology zone i i do a sun sign chart because i don't know your other planets but if you know your rising sign the sign that was rising on the eastern horizon as you were being born you should read that as well and that will give you much more of a 360 view of what's coming up each month and i write a lot you know (laughs) I write 40,000 words divided by 12 signs. I always have a summary and uh, there's lots going on in the heavens and lots of good things, things you can use. So, so I, I, I say know. because I'm a book writing coach, when you say that my eyes are like, blink. <laughs> 40,000 words is actually a 100 to 150 page book full. Is that right? Yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, because I'm writing them divided by 12 
I never really printed them all out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I didn't know that. <laughs> You are very yeah, there's a lot of detail. Well, you're doing all the math and astrology is based on geometry and we get the information from NASA and there's a thing called an ephemeris, which gives a table of where the planets are. And when they get into a certain space and they begin communicating with each other, that's significant and it has to be within eight to 10 degrees. And, and when there's an eclipse, that's important. We'll have one at the end of May and another one June 10th. So these are all big events during the year and there'll be more in the, um, in the end of the year. They come every six months. So uh, there's lots to look at and uh, lots to explain. I never want my readers to come in and feel they're in the middle of a conversation that they weren't invited to. They don't know what's going on. I'm very clear. And I make believe this is the first time you're hearing it. And I try to make it very warm and accessible. Mm -hmm. you know? What every six months an eclipse, what does an eclipse portend? What do we have to look forward to well, or be careful of? If it, it depends, these two eclipses, May 29th and June 10th are pretty friendly. However, we have Governor Cuomo, who's under a lot of stress right now. Oh, that's my fax machine. Oh, nobody faxes me. Except when you're on here. I think it stopped. We have Governor Cuomo, who's under a lot of stress. He's born December 7th. I believe it's 1957, I, or it could be 1952. I, I did a chart. I just don't have it in front of me. And that June 10th eclipse is a full moon. Oh. And it's very difficult for him mm. because, oh, it's a new moon, actually. It's a new moon in Gemini opposite Sagittarius. But it's clicking off many things in his chart. And this is a really tough case because he's such a good governor and he's so communicative. And yet you have this other side where he has been, he didn't rape anybody or really go too far, but he did things that made women feel uncomfortable. So you have the two things, but all of New Yorkers want him to stay because he's doing a great job with the pandemic. And we're in the middle of a crisis and we have to bring New York back. And he has a plan for rebuilding New York, this economy. And, uh, you know, and, and the newscasters say, why does all the New Yorkers want him to stay? <laughs> they, they, they sit there and scratch their head. And I, I'm like, it's obvious he's doing a good job. But this stuff that happens off camera in his personal life, actually, for me, I care more about the pandemic. I mean, it's hard. I care about women and how they feel. But every woman has had this happen to them. Everybody. I have. Everybody. I never told anyone. I never made a federal case out of it. It never happened again with anyone, you know, it, you know, guys are impulsive and they do things they shouldn't do, but then we move on. I just don't want someone to lose their job over it, mm -hmm. you know, but I know that that's a controversial point of view. I respect the women who came forward. It's hard for them. And uh, we see where it goes now, but that June 10th eclipse, if he makes it through June 10th, plus or minus four or five days, then he's in to the rest of the term. I don't think he'll run again. I think it's time for him to, to, to offer something else to, to the world. <laughs> but um, I would like to see him finish his term next year. Next November would be the finish. Interesting. Very well, at least the election would be next year. <laughs> we will so, pay attention politically what happens to him and with him from June 10th and the next four to five days thereafter. And so this will be a friendly eclipse for most of us. Not but not for him. him. Not for because him. 
clicking off different planets in his natal chart <laughs> and it's stressful yeah but i have seen people rise above difficult eclipses nothing is um predestined yeah. so then you know i had a very bad eclipse once yeah <laughs> oh my gosh i know it was terrifying uh, i was born with a birth defect so just let's put that on the side where i bleed internally and uh, I was looking at the eclipse and the eighth house was lit up and I was an agent for commercial photographers. And I thought, wow, I'm going to land a really big job and make a huge commission. And I was looking forward to the July 1st eclipse, 1992. I walked into this office to get an envelope to send an estimated payment to the IRS. And as I'm walking, I feel my thigh bone break like a pencil. Luckily, my daughter was home from LA at the time. Oh no, she, she wasn't even living there yet. She was still in college or high school, I don't remember. And she could help me get the ambulance. I was to die on the table. I had 18 blood transfusions that night. And all that money that I had seen coming in came in from Blue Cross. <laughs> it was a huge medical bill. They paid it. Bless their hearts. Um, and that's why I've always stuck with them. But, you know, eclipses bring to the surface things that you don't know. I was vulnerable. I had broken this leg three times and they found out I, I was born without any marrow and that I needed steel in there. And it was extremely difficult to put it in, but I had the chief of staff hospital for joint diseases, a doctor who had operated on me before. And luckily he was a genius. And sometimes really life or death depends on the skill of the doctor. And he had just spent six years developing a new technique to get the steel up high in the hip. And uh, he said, you couldn't have been saved any other way, Susan. And I said, so you studied six years to save my life. And he laughed and he said, for you, it worked out that way actually, because you were the first patient I had when I came back from Seattle, where I did all the research, but I had a new team. And while you're on the table, I'm having to teach them how we're gonna do this. It was, they were all, not acting normal when I woke up in the recovery room. Everybody was like nerves of glass. The anesthesiologist was screaming at me and said, how dare you let me go into an operation without an assistant? And I thought, I didn't know that. I said, thank you for mentioning that. They all acted like a mother who had lost a child and, and the mother shaking the child, don't walk away from me anymore. You know. They look scared, and and so um, I'm grateful to be here. <laughs> wow, and that is a long amazing. time ago, but it changes you. Life is fragile. Yes, and yeah. I I mean I had been a whole year in the hospital when I was 14, 11 months, and then in physical therapy for two years, mm. and I had a big brace on my leg. See so what would happen on the first operation, have something so rare, my veins turn to tissue paper and vanish. So it's hard for a surgeon. So they had to tourniquet me so tightly that I lost the nerve in my left leg and I had a drop foot. I couldn't feel anything. They put the, the little fork and see if I felt anything. No. They said, all right, you're young. You're 14 years old. We're going to rehabilitate it. So I never attended high school. I did homeschool. The Board of Ed works with kids like that. I, I had a teacher once a week for English, once a week for math, one hour. I changed it to two hours of math. I figured I could teach myself English. My mother covered history. <laughs> and I took my SATs, my PSATs, my Regents exams with a teacher sitting there, you know, to my house. And then I went to college. I went to NYU. And I graduated actually with honors. So it worked out. I majored in business because my father, being a practical Italian, 
<laughs> so when this nightmare is over, someday you'll have to get a job. And I said, you could say that again, daddy. And he said, well, major in business shall always work. And that those words will always work. That sounded good to me. And it, it did come in handy. You see how business works. You understand, you know, how, how to run a business. You know, you never know what you're learning, how you're going to use it later because you're too young. You don't really understand how you're going to use it. <laughs> well, so, but it worked out. It all worked, worked out. out. And you're one of these people, you just described this, that there are some people go through the eclipse and they actually are resilient. They rise above. Clearly you rose above. And I really- We all have to. We don't really have a choice. And life keeps hitting very tough questions at us. I think my readers are surprised that life can be so hard, you know, but, but it also has its beautiful moments and, and, and makes it all worthwhile. So you get the yin and the yang, but at, if you face problems and try to calm down, because if you're all scared, you won't be able to think straight. You have to be practical and put one foot in front of the other, you can find a solution. And often it means you have to do research or search people who have the expertise you need and ask them questions and even hire people who you, um, when I got deeply into digital, I did have to hire a digital expert to handle the back end of a lot of this. Cause I'm now an app developer on Apple. <laughs> I'm working on a second app. <laughs> My first one, I, put, I, I started in uh, 2003, but I, I changed it and up, up, redesigned and everything. Um, in August of this year, August 28th, I put it on the Apple App Store and on Google Play. It's doing great. I just won an award for best app for entertaining content. <laughs> And um, I'm working on another one that will not compete with my first one. It will add more information and, and be very helpful, but it's a secret. And uh, I'm working away. I'm always working on some kind of project, you know, but it's fun to make things. I just made my calendar. I'm working on 2022. There's all these twos, 222. <laughs> and looking at that year, which will be a beautiful year next year. This year is more of a year where we're kind of continuing last year, but at least we know the score now mm. and we know how serious this virus is. And we realize it's not going to be like flicking on a light switch and we all go back to work. Mm. You know, we're working now, but it's, it's going to be different. It's, it's def And a lot of people will be able to work home, which is a good thing, especially for women who have little children. You know, uh, it's nice to be near your children. Even if you have to hire a babysitter as you work, at least you're there and not spending so much time commuting. You know, I yeah. think that's good for everybody. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think this is something the working at home is going to keep for a lot of people, which is awesome. Yes. But I think about 50% or more. Yeah. About the, uh, I, I think Mercury retrograde is also a very interesting one. And most people, as soon as they hear Mercury retrograde, the first response is, oh, no. And rightfully so, contracts, computers, communication, be very careful. My understanding is that there is a very positive side. Yeah. Yes, you can find lost items. Or every once in a while you hear on the news a letter that was mailed in 1956 gets there. Um, detectives find clues to cold cases during Mercury retrograde. It's also a time to go back to people uh, you love. Like, let's say you're in sales and you have clients that are really keeping you alive. They believe in you. They keep giving you business. But sometimes the people who are holding us up, we forget to turn around and look at them and thank them. So it's a time to go back and thank them for their business, take them out to lunch, a socially distanced lunch, and, and, and say thank you. And it's not a time to develop new business, but it's a great time. Let's say you had a project that you had to put aside and you love the idea, but for some reason it couldn't, couldn't be done now at that time. 
now you might be able to dust it off and, and get the funding or the approvals or whatever you need. I've been wanting to do something for a long time. And the scientists told me we don't have the polymers and the, and the way to do it. But they told me that 10 years ago. So I'm, I'm looking at that too. <laughs> you know, you can go anywhere your imagination takes you. And we're going straight into the age of Aquarius. Uh, with, with Mercury retrograde, we are coming into that May 29th to June 22nd. It will happen again through the very end of September through most of October. So June and October, you don't want to do big things. You want to go back to the past just so to, to finish up your question about Mercury retrograde and do not buy a computer or anything. I know it's, it just sounds crazy, but Things arrive broken if you buy furniture even. Um, you have to be there to accept it and examine it because things go wrong, you know? And, and sometimes it's your judgment that's off. You, I gave my daughter a gift card at Christmas for a new computer, a laptop. She buys it and then a month later said, I had to sell it. I said, why? Apple makes great products. She said, I don't know what I was thinking. She's a music producer. She needs 40,000 songs in her hard drive. She didn't buy a big enough hard drive and she wanted it on the computer. She does have external drives too, but she needed a more powerful computer. So she sold it. <laughs> Luckily in a person in her neighborhood in Los Angeles <laughs> and she didn't have to ship it. She could gently, it was a brand new computer and buy a new one. So um, sometimes our judgment is off. We just never get the pleasure from that item that we're buying that we think we're going to get. Mm, interesting. And what about fashion? I love oh. the fact that you can recommend or understand our best fashion style based on our sun sign. That's fascinating to me. Well, it's, it's so much fun. You know, you... You have Aries who tends to like sleek and not too fussy. And, uh, and there, some of them, well, it depends on your job. If you have a job that is creative, then you can be much more relaxed. Although now that we're all home, <laughs> we're wearing very different clothes now. It's true. You know? We're I haven't worn it. high heels in so long. It's amazing. It's really oh yeah, cool. yeah. And we're all saying it's good, <laughs> but uh, like Taurus likes investment pieces. They like the finest fabrics. They're extremely um, acutely aware of their senses. So they, if you're having lunch with them, they'll reach over and touch your sweater. Ooh, what's this made of? It's just beautiful. Is there angora in there? Or they'll taste the soup and they'll say, I taste a spice in here. Here, take your spoon. See if you can taste the same spice I have. Or they'll go to the movies with you and there'll be background music that you're not even listening to. And they said, oh, wasn't that music really good? And I'm like, what music? What are you talking about? You didn't hear it. It really helped the whole scene. And, they're, and they even are remembering the name of the music. They're wonderful about sensual things. Uh, Gemini, Gemini loves to be on top of fashion. They're the ones that used to read tons of magazines. Right now, magazines are going through a hard time. So they're on Instagram. <laughs> but they're they're picking out what they want to buy. They're very careful about it. They want the newest look and they're very good with accessories because they get bored easily. Cancer looks like a Valentine. They are very romantic and they have the most beautiful skin. And so it's good if they have like an open neckline uh, because they, it doesn't matter what ethnicity the cancer is. They're lit from within that is amazing. and it's just beautiful. Uh, and they look great in silks mm -hmm. and, and whites with a sheen to it, like moonlight, but also tea rose and, and tea green and that pale, pale pink that's inside a shell. You know, they're very special. Uh, then you have Leo who wants to look dramatic. 
And they'd rather have very few things in their wardrobe, but the best designer cut and color and the latest styles. You know, if they can't afford a lot, they'll buy few things, but they'll be beautiful. A uh, Virgo um, actually has made friends with the tailor. They are so meticulous about wearing clothes that fit perfectly. It looks like they have couture clothes. I once read that Jackie Kennedy, who's a Leo, who was a Leo, uh, always bought her clothes a little too big and then had the tailor make them perfect. You know, that's why she looks so great all the time. That's, I think that's a very good tip. Uh, Libra is, they have more fashion and beauty editors in the magazines than any other sign. They are the sign that's up to date on all cultural trends. If you want to know the best little restaurant that's just opened up in your neighborhood or the new bestseller to read or the movie to go to or, or look at it on Netflix, you have to ask a Libra because they're right on top of all of this. And they have so many friends. They have more, more friends than they can count. And they, they get oxygen from being with other people. And, and they always look up to date. Scorpio is more like Taurus in that they like investment dressing. They, um, it's, they wear very simple but beautiful, like Armani kind of look, simple. But yet their lingerie is wildly sexy. <laughs> this is the sexy sign of the Zodiac. She may wear black in the boardroom, but she's got red lace underneath all that. So, uh, or black lace. Um, but they like classic things, you know, the Burberry raincoat and the leather jacket. They love leather because leather is ruled by Pluto. So they love a beautiful leather bag or a leather briefcase or a leather belt. Um, and they always look smart, really great. And they never let the clothes dominate them. You notice them. Um, next is Sagittarius. They're free flowing. They do not want to be uncomfortable. Uh, they travel a lot. They're always on airplanes. And the pandemic has been really hard on Sagittarius because we they haven't been able to travel overseas. Uh, we're on the no fly list of every country in the universe. So they do more for a pair of jeans and a white crisp shirt than any other sign. They're usually lean and uh, somewhat tall and uh, but not always, but they, they they're very fit because they embody the mind, body, spirit, uh, ideal of the Greeks. And they, if they're going to wear a dress, they don't want to be confined. They don't want to, they don't want to be tight. You know, they, they want to feel comfortable. Um, now Capricorn, that, that's Kate, um, Middleton. Mm -hmm. They love tradition. Mm. They love history. She's perfect for this job. <laughs> Ribbon cutting ceremonies. She loves it, uh, you know, and, and all the pomp and ceremony. Now she, they tend to like classic things like a classic um, Chanel suit. Who wouldn't like that? <laughs> Certain beautiful things that they can wear for a long time, you know, through many seasons and maybe four years or even five years, a beautiful winter coat. And they, they're very careful about the fabric. They are like Taurus in that they like investment pieces, cashmere, silk, poplin cotton, wool. You know, they're, they really love good fabric. Um, Aquarius will wear something that NASA just developed and it'll be in a neon color. Aquarius doesn't care if you like it or not. You know, you might say, you know, um, I'm not so sure about that dress. Well, I don't care. I didn't wear it for you. I wore it for me. That's how they are. They have their own standard of success. And that's why they are all about the future. They'll, they'll wear mylar. <laughs> and we're going into a stage now. We're going to do a lot of probing into space. And that's where a lot of the new inventions come from. 
and we're going to see new fabrics and new electronics and new everything because we're going into a true Aquarian age now. Well, I think the minute little persistence landed on Mars, this little truck that weighed a ton and decided to scoop up Earth and they somehow he put it in these little droney things and airmailed them back to Earth, giving airmail a new read a new meaning i mean that's crazy and it takes months for them to get there but they they didn't want to wait 10 years to study the earth on mars so uh, now they have a helicopter did you hear today the little helicopter had to take off and take pictures around mars but there were so many you know, hard things that they had to work out before they even tried this, that it sounds miraculous that they were able to do it and they are able to do it. So we're, we're going to have a lot of exciting news as we go along because space and also the oceans oh, will be areas of great innovation. And in fashion, they don't follow fashion. They they actually make it, people follow them. And they're very into organic. Even what they eat, uh, Aquarians tend to eat uh, vegetarian or, or they eat lightly. They don't, ex they don't like to spend a lot on a dinner like Leo would, their opposite sign. Is why would you spend all that? <laughs> Leo says, why not? It's fine, you know, but they, they don't, they like simple food. And then you have Pisces, another little Valentine mm -hmm. who loves super feminine things and flowers and bows and lace and tool. <laughs> and, and just, you know, very soft because they have a soft Twinkie heart inside. And this is the compassionate side that will always help others, no matter how busy they are, they'll drop everything and help others. And they're very, very creative as well. They, they turn out fabulous photographers, film uh, uh, directors and choreographers and costume designers and artists and musicians. Oh gosh, Neptune rules music. Mm -hmm. So um, they always have a project. Mm -hmm. So they need to be comfortable. You know, because they're always working on something. <laughs> so that's all 12 signs. That's <laughs> I love this. Thank you so much for going. <laughs> and I know everybody got something. And every time you named a sign, I was thinking of who I knew in that sign. And it was very funny. Uh, very interesting to see. We're going to transition into the fact that you offer a gift guide for selecting the perfect gift. So just to throw it out there, my guy is a Leo. So what oh. would you, and that's my rising. So I, I, I dig it, right? <laughs> what would you recommend buying for a Leo man? What's a great gift? Luxury, luxury. You have to get a designer shirt or um, jacket um, or a briefcase, depending on what he does. You know, uh, for my editor, mm -hmm. I got him a gift certificate in Thomas Pink where they made a custom shirt for him. <laughs> and he loved that, you know, and it looks great on him. He could pick the fabric and everything. Um, but they, uh, they also have off the rack and then they make sure it fits you. And if it doesn't fit you well, then they bring in the tailor. And uh, they do that in Bergdorf's too. I didn't realize that you put on a dress and they say, let me get Rosa. <laughs> like She comes in with her little pin cushion and she said, we will deliver this to your house in a week. I'm like, I could learn to love this. I, mean, <laughs> I had to get a very important dress because I was doing something for Neiman Marcus and I wanted it to be white and beautiful and it was a dinner for many people and uh, so I, I got this and I found out what it was like <laughs> to shop in in Nima Marcus's sister store Bergdorf's which we have here mm -hmm. so um yeah so I would get him it has to be a designer item it has to be 
luxurious in some way. Well, you know, you can uh, see, usually if we're not in the middle of a pandemic, he would love two theater tickets Mm. where you say, we're going to sit in the orchestra and we're going to see something that's just come out that he hasn't seen and maybe have dinner afterwards if you really want to splurge. (laughs) Or, um, you know, let's see, what else? They like concerts too. They love music. Or they love audio equipment. They love having the best, like speakers, new speakers, or uh, something of that sort. Yeah. So um, you just nailed yeah. that. That's crazy. <laughs> that is so apropos. And all of these sound like fun. Who wouldn't like any of these things, right? <laughs> but my guy, yeah. especially, that is so good. Okay. What would yeah, somebody yeah, say can. for me? A cancer. What are, are you a cancer? Mm-hmm. I would get you something gorgeous from William Sonoma, something for the kitchen. I bet you're a good cook. Are you a good cook? I love, I love being in the kitchen. My guy and I spent a lot of time. Me too. That's the one change I've had during the pandemic. I am cooking all the time. I joined Blue Apron. My daughter gave me a gift certificate and it changed my life. Every week I make three meals and they're like, I'm making duck a l'orange next week, which I've never made. Uh, but I'm a good cook. When I was 20, I went through the um, Julia Child cookbook <laughs> and I, you know, like that movie, I made a lot of the dishes and I'm really good at souffles, but this made me try new spices that I never heard of. And, and, new techniques of cooking that were fairly quick. I mean, I can make a meal in 35 to 40 minutes, which is a nice little break when I'm writing, writing, writing and chopping the garlic and the carrots. It's sort of very calming, you know? So, so I would get you a, a beautiful pot, a Dutch oven, um, uh, some, something, a, a, a knife. But if I got you a, great knife and they're expensive you'd have to give me a penny because you should never give someone a knife without getting a penny back <laughs> well, I, I that. i've never heard that before yeah my father told me that and it is a kind of a a, a thing <laughs> now for like an aquarian or let's see i would give a, a swiss army knife <laughs> i never travel without one Never. When I go into hotel rooms and then they hand me a big FedEx box, how am I going to saw through it? So I use my Swiss Army knife or to open, like I've ordered a Diet Coke, but I can't get that twist off thing. And there it comes right off. No, I use my Swiss Army knife. Once I lost it, I had to go right out and buy another one. I think everyone should have one in their suitcase. Yeah. But anyway, coming back to cancer, well, if you know her perfume, mm-hmm. oh gosh, or maybe introduce her to a new one, but it has to be soft, mm-hmm. like some of Shalimar, something haunting and romantic. Mm-hmm. You know, I wish Velvet would come back. I think it will. We haven't seen it in a while. You know, for the fall, something Velvet. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, something just beautiful and soft and silk be white silk um if you want to give her flowers they have to be white someone sent me gardenias with lilies and they were laying down in the box as if they had just been picked with with violet tissue paper Mm. oh it was gorgeous and i and they told you how to put them in the vase i had enough vases Mm -hmm. and they said break them up because we sent you a lot (laughs) It said this in the instructions, you know, that was pre-printed. And the, the scent of gardenias is just incredible. And I've never seen gardenias sent to you. My mother had them in her bridal um, bouquet and I had them in mine. But uh, gar- gardenias are something with a beautiful scent like white lilies, uh, coronation lilies, these aren't open yet, but their scent is so nice and they last forever. <laughs> you have to keep changing the water, but it's phenomenal for a cancer. 
you know, cancer is always thinking about everybody else and making sure they're okay. And, and maybe we should send after the pandemic cancer out to have a massage, Ugh. you know, at the four seasons, someplace great, you know, <laughs> you know, for Aries, they have to do something physical, like take a hike or run around the reservoir. Mm. They have to do something physical to throw it off. When they've had a tough phone call, they just need to get some air and to get out. Taurus, music helps them tremendously. They might wanna put their headphones on and, and work quietly with, with the music. Um, I would think that would be the best for them. For Gemini, they have to call a friend. Talking relaxes them. <laughs> and you know, it's so great to talk to a friend because women live through other, other women's stories. For example, if your best friend had a bad day and, and she, so she says, I went into my boss's office and you say, and then what happened? Did you sit down? Yes, but I closed the door first. So every detail, and then I said this, and then my boss said that, and you said, how did you answer that question? And then she tells you and you say, you know, I think it's not as bad as you think it is. I think you're going to come out of this even stronger because your answers were so good. So talking really helps, especially Gemini. Cancer often needs to play with a child who's giggling and laughing and will pull her out of her everyday uh, or him, you know, uh, routine or, or go in the kitchen and whip something up. Uh, like I was saying that dicing and, and whisking really is therapeutic or maybe even taking a walk to a really nice grocery store. I just was in one today and I was looking for sour cherry jam and they had it because it's part of the recipe I'm working on and it's tart. It's just oh, perfect. And this store had it and they had the cheeses out and they, and just walking through the store was inspirational. I, I didn't buy anything other than what I went in there for, but I was happy there. And I got some air and I walked home and it, it was nice. So uh, cancer, cancer and food are kind of connected, but also with children. Leo, Leo needs diversion but they often can't get it because they have highly creative jobs and they work in teams. And so they, they have to uh, just work with others, but try to screen out the people who are giving them the trouble, <laughs> you know, try to just get a little distance for a little while and to mull it over a little, but they're not that in introspective. They, uh, they too find music very therapeutic. And uh, if they can go out that night and have a dinner with a friend, that would help enormously because that would totally lift the stress of the day off them. Virgo likes to do puzzles. They, uh, they might do a crossword puzzle. They like to use their brain. Or they might download a new book from the best-selling list on Amazon and have it. I have a... Um, I have an, a, a small Amazon tablet just for books. I have an iPad for a, a podcast that I listen to and the New York Times, you know? So, um, you know, I don't know why, but I like them separate. Uh, it's easier to download from Amazon on their product. But uh, Virgo has to use their intellect and they also want to analyze what's going on. Sometimes they take it too far and they need a friend or a partner to stop them <laughs> from being too analytical. Libra has to see their friends. They're a lot like Gemini. They have to see, they probably want to get four friends together for dinner. They have to talk it over and decide what to do next, you know, about that hard day. Uh, Scorpio needs to be alone. Mm. 
I was married to a Scorpio. And the only thing we disagreed on is the fact that he never talked to me. <laughs> he said, I've been talking all day long. I just want to read the paper. And he wouldn't say a word the whole night. <laughs> and of course, I'm home with two little children. And I'm dying to talk to an adult. And that was the one thing that was mismatched with us. He needed the quiet. Uh, Scorpio needs it at a very high degree because they're so sensitive and their emotions go so deep. Um, Sagittarius is very athletic. They head for the gym after work and they, they find an hour of working out makes them totally new again. And uh, they like that. Also thinking about their next trip. <laughs> they're always planning one. Uh, Capricorn. Capricorn may want some comfort food that night, something similar to what he or she had in, in childhood. Now, what did mom make? Did she make meatloaf? Did she make mac and cheese? What did she make? Some, some pudding that, you know, you remember loving when your mother made it. <laughs> something from your past. If you're a Capricorn, that will calm you. Although I have a whole list of things uh, that I spent time thinking about. So there are more than these things. Aquarius needs to head to an electronics store and look at all the new products. <laughs> or maybe pick up a new pair of uh, headphones or, or a new software or a new gadget. Um, it, their happiest place is in a computer store, let's face it. <laughs> and even dreaming about what they're going to buy. And that includes cars that have electronics in them. Um, that they're just happy. And uh, Pisces, Pisces either prays or meditates. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if they do exercise, it has to be gentle. Mm -hmm. uh, they, or swim. Oh my gosh. Of course. Pisces. Go in a beautiful swimming pool. <laughs> oh. <Yes>. Warm one. <laughs> and just go through the rippling water. Can you feel it? Oh, turquoise water. Oh. Oh. That you all have in LA that we don't have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would relax the Pisces. To be near water. Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio like to be on vacation near water. They can go to the mountains, but it has to have a lake or it has to have a brook or a creek or something, but they tend to like the seashore. But if they can, if they're near water, they're happy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Wow, that's incredible. What a breakdown. <laughs> so with that said, I want to hearken back to something you said in the beginning, which was 2022, good year stick around for it. You're going to want to 2021, which we're in right now, a little more of the same, although we are fully on board, like we know what's going on. What can we expect this year? And well, this year, 2021, look, every year that God gives us is precious. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I was in the hospital, they'd always say crazy things like, you're going to go home now to live your life. Well, I was living my life in the hospital, too. Every experience you have affects you and makes you where you are today, you know? So this year, two big planets are in Aquarius, and uh, we have a chance to help other people. My theory is that when we had all those planets in Capricorn, we were getting those stimulus checks and you know, that kind of thing. I think the governments are going to be tapped out after this last one. And I think the help will come from each other and from philanthropic organizations or people just banding together like they did in Texas during that blackout recently, a couple of months ago, where it was so cold and they had no electricity and they had no food and they had no water. My cousin lives there. Her boyfriend was chopping wood and she was boiling water. She did have a gas stove, but it was absolutely sub-zero in her house. But they did have a fireplace, so they got that working. But it um, people helping people 
It's going to be volunteerism on a major scale, harking back to the way JFK encouraged people to maybe join the Peace Corps, but this will be domestic, I think. This will be, you join an organization to help your community, your state, your region, your country. You know, it won't be helping people overseas necessarily, but Aquarius likes to work in groups. The reason I think we'll still be wearing masks next year is Saturn is still in Aquarius. Aquarius is a respiratory sign. Saturn makes you play by the book. Every rule you have to follow. He draws a straight line with chalk and you have to walk that chalk line. You step off of it, you get whacked. Boy, oh boy, Aquarius. Okay, that's not good news. <laughs> I'm not into Well, that. it just means we all have to follow what science tells us. Right, right. Because we, well, we have to do it as a community. If, if we don't have 80% of people vaccinated, Dr. Fauci said we won't get herd immunity. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this is going to take time. And also the poor countries need the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take time. Is there anything positive we can look forward to in 2021 that will portend what's around the corner in 2022? Are there any highlights that we can- Well, the, the two hang years on your are very calendar. different. <laughs> This year and next year are very different. Mm -hmm. This year, Saturn and Uranus are having a dispute. Hmm. Saturn wants to save things from the past that are valuable. Buckingham Palace, <laughs> George Washington letters, estate jewelry, of course, you know, landmark buildings. Some things are obvious. Aquarius, um, I'm sorry, Uranus wants to change everything and innovate and bring out products and services and ideas that are more suitable to the times. Now, some things will be obvious. We have to get rid of this. We have to keep that. But there will be a gray area that we'll have a public discussion. Do we keep it or do we tear it down? You know, here in New York, they should have never torn down Penn Station. It was beautiful. So we've erected a new one using a lot of the old structures that was in that neighborhood and trying to bring back some of the history. So sometimes we bulldoze things that we should never bulldoze. So this year is going to be what stays, what goes. And even in people's, in people's uh, lives, in your own life, do I want to go back to that job? What kind of life do I want to go back to? I don't have to go back to the same life. It could be different. But the more you can think about it and imagine it almost as if it's a movie, the easier it will be to go into that new life that you want. We've been isolated enough to know what it could be. And uh, so this is going to keep up all year. We had the first dispute February 11th. Then the next one comes June 14th. And the last one comes December 23rd, 24th, depending on the time zone you're in. So it's the whole year. Now, it doesn't have to be on that day because these planets move like little turtles. They're so slow. So you're feeling it the whole year. In Congress, we're discussing, do we keep the filibuster? That's tradition. Should we keep it or should we get rid of it? This is very typical of Saturn Uranus. So we're, you know, we're looking at everything with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. Next year, we have the meeting of Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. And they're only meeting once, um, April 12th, but the die is set. And these two move so slowly. Look, Neptune takes 168 years to go around the sun. Jupiter takes 12 years. So to get them together is really hard. And to get them together in Pisces, why is it so important? Neptune rules Pisces 
but Jupiter used to rule Pisces and still does in ancient times before Neptune was found. And Pisces is considered the most creative sign of the Zodiac. Mm. And now these two planets are meeting in the sign. So I think we're gonna have a renaissance of fashion, beauty, art, movies, literature, architecture, everything, food. You just Next year. everything I love. And that is going to be reminiscent of uh, uh, the flapper era hmm. when we came out of the uh, Spanish flu. So that was in 1920, but it was in the latter part of 1920. The Spanish flu took about two and a half years hmm. to disappear, but they didn't even have a vaccine. They didn't even know what was causing it, hmm. you know, and World War One was creating the problem because the soldiers were together in the bunkers and they they were spreading you know they couldn't social distance they didn't even know that it was important to but that's what was the big problem yeah okay I, i've done a lot of reading on the spanish flu it's interesting it is interesting historically uh, since we're repeating but we're so much more yeah <laughs> scientifically so this is good news this sounds like really good news and what about it's going to be great next year and i think a lot of the art that we're going to see next year is being created now hmm. you know this is the first time the whole world has had the exact same experience together hmm. at the same moment hmm. And I think when we see stories in a book or in a movie or on television, we'll say, wait a minute, I felt that way. There'll be a real connection, you know, or in the music too. There's going to be a lot. Now also with Aquarius, we're moving away from Capricorn. Capricorn is patriarchal. The king dictates what you're going to do or the president or the prime minister or whatever. Every sign on the wheel of the horoscope is opposite the sign that came before. So if Capricorn loves the past and tradition and history and is patriarchal, Aquarius loves the future and innovation, but it also creates change, not from the top down, from the, but rather the bottom up. Grassroots. And we, you know, Saturn went into Aquarius for a brief moment last March 20th to July 1st. Hmm. July 20th is when New York shut down. I think you shut down a week before us. Yep. California was, of course, the leader of the parade, <laughs> knowing what to do first. But we were all isolated. We were all on the computer. We were doing very Aquarian things, working in groups, Pfizer, was working with England and Denmark to develop the, the vaccine. And because we had Watson, every time a scientist would make a breakthrough, he'd write a white paper and it would pop up on Watson. So they didn't have to go out and wait for the New England Journal of Medicine to see what's going on. Everybody was informed. So there was no duplication of effort. Now we can't discount the fact that there was plenty of money to do the research. I mean, the government gave a lot of money and they didn't have to look for sponsors. Okay, so we put that aside, but they worked in groups and the president of Pfizer said something very Aquarian. It's amazing what can be achieved when no one cares who gets the credit. That's so Aquarius, because mm. they're always doing things for the good of mankind. Mm. You know, whereas Leo on the opposite side would like the credit, would like the byline, would like the credit in the movie. Would, it's fine, there's nothing right or wrong here. It's just a difference of perspective of how people operate in the world. And remember, they like to work in groups for humanitarian reasons. Uh, you're going to see big advances in medicine where they can take out genes that hurt people like sickle cell anemia or macular degeneration or you know all these things that are inherited they'll be able to identify them and take them out in utero but governments are going to have to make laws not to have designer babies mm -hmm. once you use crispr to get into human life 
you've got to have some rules. And I started on the internet in 1995. I just celebrated my 25th year of astrology zone. And there were no rules. It was the wild west. <laughs> there was no rules at all. People were stealing my federal trademark. People were copying and pasting my work and putting their name on it. Now you can't do that. And the readers were telling me it was happening. And I didn't even believe it was possible, but it was. So um, they'll have to make rules. We're going to have flying taxis. and Well, <laughs> we've lost Susan again. And um, like, welcome to technology. Uh, for all of you who are working from home, even if you've got 5G or better, hardwire, you know, as well as I do, that when everybody and their children are home and everyone's using the internet, this is what happens. Welcome to modern times. <laughs> and so we forgive her, bless her, and love her for this experience, uh, not, not her fault at all. But I do want to make sure to reiterate, I mean, I'm getting a ton out of everything she shared. She just gave us so much content. And if you would like to order this year's astrology calendar from her, go to astrologyzone.com. I want to comment that as you're watching, or if you're watching us on YouTube, and I hope you will, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. It's really worth it to see the energetic interaction and what people look like together. But you will notice right behind her left shoulder is her sumptuous calendar. I've seen them before in person. I've met her before several times. And these are curated, well put together. She knows the artist. I mean, they each month represents the sign. It, it couldn't be more beautiful. And it comes with a ton of information on every day, maybe not every single day in the month, but the days that are meaningful to know something about. So if you are interested in getting Susan's calendar, astrology, zone.com. And I end today's show with this quote from JP Morgan. Anyone can be a millionaire, but to become a billionaire, you need an astrologer. Next week on this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream, I am featuring Amy E. Smith. She is the founder of thejoyjunkie.com. She's going to talk about radical personal empowerment and self-worth. She's been all over magazines, radio, and television. She's a badass. So definitely tune in and get your free templates at debbiedashinger.com slash message. Thank you so much for joining us on Dare to Dream. It's been a pleasure.